Happiness is hiking. Saturday. What's the date today, Susan? 13th. 13th finds us out hiking Gates Creek Trail, going up to Browder Ridge. We do have a group behind us, but we're gonna head up here. Beautiful view of the sisters, so forth. It's a nice trail. So, come with. Let's go together and we'll explore Gates Creek Trail. It's really highly uh, not marked. <laughs> this marking is not very good, but they do have this nice thing here, Gates Creek Trail, and then runs into Browder Ridge Trail. Browder Ridge Trail, kind of a misnomer, because it starts off at Gate Creek, and it really is Browder Ridge. So that's where we're going. Okay. We'll see you in a little bit. Well, Gates Creek Trail starts off with a bang. It is uphill. The first part is uh, more, shall we say, rustic. It refines as it goes on. But don't quote me. But I think the first 500 feet elevation gain is within the first quarter mile. <laughs> it's, it's a steep one. You think you're going to find a little flat spot. Like, oh, yeah, we can kind of rest here. But no, it just keeps going up. Rhododendrons, uh, a nice forest. A nice forest. We're switchbacking. There's the top, Susan. There's the top of the first section. So once we clear this first section, we get into a climax forest of uh, firs, old growth. It's just beautiful. It really is beautiful. It's worth the hike to see that but it keeps going through different ecos, climates. It's a, it's a good trail. It's a off the beaten track trail. On the way up here, we passed Iron Mountain. We passed a couple other trails and they were packed. We have a hiking group behind us they're coming up first time on this trail. And that will probably be it. Right now, the trail head is unmarked. Uh, you could drive right by it. You could drive right by it 10 times. It's very obscure, but uh, I have been here many times. So I knew, I knew when to stop the car anyway. So, that's it, Browder Ridge Trail, Gates Creek, Gate, I think it's called Gate Creek Trailhead. We'll keep you in, getting into the old growth section. Sun's coming out. We're up on the first part of the ridge. Absolutely beautiful. Our group is caught up with us. So we're gonna take a break and let them go by. Enjoy. You guys Good heading back already? Yeah, we're going behind you. So I So again, the camera just won't get it. But believe me, this tree is at least eight feet, if not nine feet in diameter.
it just goes on forever. Unbelievable. And you know, the interesting thing is that we're on a ridge and old growth on ridges is, is kind of rare. Most old growth will be down in valleys that are protected from the wind. But this old growth is up on a ridge. So I think I have seen, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, see if I can't catch one, film it, that some of the trees have the indication of what's called a wind snake. And a wind snake is when the tree is twisted torsionally from the wind and the grain on the interior of the tree separates. It splits longitudinally. So it develops what they call a wind snake. And when they're cutting the tree into boards, the boards will just fall apart along the line of the wind snake because it's a separation of the growth rings. It's really kind of an interesting phenomena. As if, you know, sometimes you see like a stop sign in the wind, a very strong wind, the stop sign will be waving back and forth. That's a torsion movement. And that's what happens to trees on ridges in high wind. You know, that's one of the, I, I don't want to say negative, but one of the things about uh, using a camera to try and capture the majesty of a place is it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just does not work. Uh, obviously, you'll be watching this, and I'm going to tell you that this is just amazing. The trees just seem to go on forever. And you can't tell that with, with a, a video. You know, the trail to you right in front of me looks probably flat. It's not flat. It's not like really steep, but it's most certainly not flat. And the trees that you're seeing, these old growth fir are diameter of six, seven feet and height. Well, I don't know. I can hardly see the top. I can't hardly bend over far enough to, to see the top. So that's... That's one of the things. So, you know, in a sense, work with me. <laughs> Understand that I'm trying my best to bring this to you, but I'm going to ever fail. Forever fail. Because it's just not possible. You really have to be here and smell the forest and feel the sun and the shade. The one thing we can capture is how quiet it is. It's very quiet. Just a great hike on a little known trail, Router Ridge. Crowder Ridge has some amazing trees. Old growth fir. They just seem to go on forever. Skyscrapers. Cloud scrapers. This, this ridge right here is just full of them. When the trees start to get old and the space between them grows, it's really kind of cool looking. Look at this tree over here. I mean, look at that tree. And then it's a neighbor. Just immense trees have been here for a long time. Sentinels marking this place. 
keeping watch of these groups. Amazing. So fun. Feels good to be back on Browder Ridge. I haven't hiked this trail for a long time. So we kind of crisscross this meadow and we finally come into the main part of the meadow. This trail is kind of known for its wildflowers and so forth. I think that's pretty much past now because of all the ferns. But earlier in the year, this meadow was just a sea of flowers. Pretty cool. We also have our first real viewpoint. And that is of... Would you say that's Three Fingers Jack? Or is that, uh, I think that's Three Fingers Jack. Hard to tell with the uh, with his head in the clouds. <laughs> but we do have some great views of Washington, Three Fingers Jack, the sisters. In a sense, this trail, this is the trail that made me decide I needed to get a camera. That is Washington, too, by the way. I see Scott's, Scott's Mountain over there. This is the trail. Because I would find myself in these beautiful places without a camera. And this would be for, uh, you know, phone set cameras. So I decided I needed to get a camera. So I did and have never looked back really enjoyed that aspect of hiking taking photos sharing all good stuff that was the lucky thing about last weekend as the summer progresses, the cloud cover up here gets more and more intense and the haze increases. So Jefferson is, you know, total, almost totally obscured. That was Three Fingers Jack. The top, we couldn't, we, he was, <laughs> we weren't able to see if he was giving us the finger, so we didn't know it was him. That's Mount Washington behind that tree. And then of course his sisters who are just totally obscured by clouds. We were up there last weekend and how lucky we were because we didn't have any clouds up there. It was so beautiful the whole time we were up there. So Browder Ridge is the first place that I hiked to that actually had a panoramic view like this. And it was at this very place that I decided I needed a camera. Because I stood here and said, oh my gosh, I can't believe how beautiful this is. And I have no way of recording it to bring it in home. So this is where it, that happened. And in a sense, it led up to this moment that I'm here with you videoing this experience. It all was kind of a progression and here we are together. So I hope you enjoyed as much as I am, as Susan is, because we are very much enjoying this. Enjoying bringing this to you. Right, Susan? She's not just a yes girl. She does say no sometimes. Just not here. Just not when we're out in these beautiful places. This is such a nice trail up here. There really are a lot of wildflowers up here right now. I see wild roses. Yeah, I saw. I thought I saw wild roses. Yeah, here's a wild rose. Look at these white flowers. I don't know what they are, but of course, bear grass.
Susan said, don't dilly-dally underneath that tree. I think I agree with her. We'll just kind of slip in. Beautiful breeze here right now. And I mean, really, that's one of the great pleasures on a sunny, warm day to walk in an area that is shaded and has a nice breeze. I mean, that's the stuff dreams are made out of. Still, not too much has changed with the uh, sisters. I can see where we were last week. The valley that uh, Chambers Lake is in. It's a saddle between Middle and South Sister. And one of those bumps over there is Proxy and Substitute Point. That's where we were a few weeks ago and went camping in the burn. If you're just watching this video, you should uh, check us out and look up the Foley Ridge hike. And uh, we, we hiked through the burn up there. That was quite an experience. From here, you can't even tell. But there was uh, like 26,000 acres burned last year. This is one of the hardest things to illustrate is how steep things are. I don't know from this video that you can tell that we're traversing a very steep ridge, but we are. <laughs> this is steep country. People that have vertigo would not find it comfortable to cross this ridge, to traverse this ridge. Uh, and again, I, it just doesn't come across when you change three dimension to two dimension. But those trees in front of us are, I'm gonna guess, and say 110 feet away. And we are looking probably at 50 feet of tree from the base to, you know, level across. So in 100 feet, we're, we're at about 50 feet or so, maybe 60. So it's, it's dropping quite rapidly, quite rapidly. There's the sisters. And uh, we can see the uh, husband, and we can see, we probably could see Substitute Point here at some point, which is where we went camping a few weeks back. Good times. Really good times. But I'm going to try to illustrate, or at least tell you, that... This is steep country. I don't know if it comes across, but going up this hill would be quite a chore. So this is kind of a connecting, I don't want to say connecting trail, but it is kind of a connecting trail. So we've been coming down, not that you can see, but we've been coming up a ridge over on this side. 
And now we have this kind of connecting ridge. It's quite wide. And then we're going to go over to another ridge and pick up the, and if I, you know, don't quote me, but I think it's called Eagle's Rest. Eagle's Nest, Eagle's Rest, Eagle's something. And it's on a different ridge. So this is like the little connecting section. Pretty flat. Nice, easy going. I was telling Susan the last time I came through here, there was three feet of snow. I couldn't tell where the trail was. And I had to just cross country up to the top. It's a wonder I made it. Huh. See, they're doing trail maintenance here. There's not a lot of signage on this trail. I mean, so far zero. But somebody has come out and cut to uh, clear the trail, which is interesting and nice and good and we love it because we love hiking sure sign of summer bear glass in bloom i think it's so cool when you come across a trail that has bear grass in bloom. Browder Ridge Trail, definitely worth checking out. I think those are salmon berries right there. If I'm not mistaken. We got this little rock program going on here. It's pretty cool. The trail now has come along and we're on the other ridge. We've made our little connecting. Pretty cool. Ah, we can see uh, Mount Washington. Clouds have finally lifted there. That's the ridge we hiked along over on that side. Sisters are still obscured in uh, clouds. And again, I know you, I don't know if you can tell, but this is really steep country. You wouldn't want to have to go up there. Or down there for that matter. So we push for the top. 